Okay, so in this experiment, we're going to show how to prove that during photosynthesis, our chloroplasts are producing electrons in the light dependent reactions when they're exposed to light. So, to do this, we are going to take some plant material. We have some spinach leaves here, and we are going to isolate the chloroplasts from those. We are using a chemical that we've used before. Uh, in a core practical for testing vitamin C called DC PIP and DC PIP is an electron acceptor. It accepts electrons and goes from blue to colorless as it's reduced. So as it reduces, it gains electrons and goes colorless. We have an isolation medium and the isolation medium is phosphate buffer, uh, glucose and some salts. And that's uh, so that we don't have the cell of the chloroplasts burst due to osmotic pressure. We have a chilled mortar and pestle, and we'll need five test tubes, which we'll label one to five, and a filter funnel and some Moore's lint. We'll also need some ice so we can keep everything on ice between each experiment. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some spinach leaves you want to take three spinach leaves out of there. And the spinach leaves are quite good. All we need to do is use a standard pair of scissors or just tear them up and cut them into small one centimeter kind of square pieces. It doesn't really matter if they have to be a particular size. Just chop them up. And then we'll put them into the pestle and mortar with a little bit of isolation medium, about 10 millilitres. And we'll add a little bit of sand to help break them, to help uh, the abrasion. And what will happen is when we uh, grind it up, it will cause the cells to be broken up and the chloroplasts to be released. All right, so we've cut up our spinach leaves and put them into the um, pestle, or uh, the mortar actually, with the uh, sand. And we've got our isolation medium here, so if you just add the isolation medium. And then we'll begin to grind it up and the cells will be broken apart and the chloroplast will be released. If you do this for too long, then you can break open the chloroplast as well, so be careful. You can do this in a blender as well, but a pestle and mortar works just fine. Okay, so we've finished grinding up our um, spinach and now we can transfer it to our filter with some thick muslin. Don't use filter paper for this because filter paper will just bung up. So we just pour our mixture into there so we can get rid of any of the large pieces of leaf that's still in there. If it doesn't go very, very quickly, we can just gather up the muslin together and just give it a bit of a squeeze and that will push the um, push the uh, liquid through. Right. So we finished filtering and now we have our um, liquid which contains our chloroplasts and now we want to use our centrifuge to um, spin those out and form a pellet and then we can, re re um, we can resuspend them in isolation medium and have a pure suspension of just chloroplasts. This process also gets rid of the mitochondria, so you only get, end up with the chloroplast. So we're gonna use our centrifuge, which is over here, big bench centrifuge. But to do that, we need to measure out an exact amount so we can put an exact amount of water in an opposite tube so we can balance the centrifuges to make sure that the whole system's balanced for it to work correctly. Okay, so the centrifuges are ready to go. We've kept the um, leaf preparation on ice to make sure we don't get any degradation of the chloroplasts. We've put exactly the same amount of liquid in every one of these tubes to make sure the centrifuge is going to be balanced. So if we place the centrifuge tube in here ready to go and then place them into the centrifuge cups, you can grab that one and put it into there. The lids go on tightly. This is a quite a large scale centrifuge. You can get smaller bench centrifuges as well. I think it's... Uh... Just lift it out slightly. There we go. And then we're going to take it over to our centrifuge.
So we have a large vent centrifuge here. And we have to make sure the centrifuge is balanced because otherwise it can become unstable, could damage the centrifuge. Place the two in there and then we're going to set the time for 10 minutes and the revolutions to about 3000 revolutions per minute. And that will be enough to force the um, chloroplasts to the bottom to form a pellet. So while we're waiting for the centrifuge, we've got to make up our five tubes. And here's the table showing what's gonna go into the five tubes. Okay, the centrifuge is finished. And now what we have here is our extract of chloroplasts. And that's a nice pellet there at the bottom and a supernatant at the top, which is just basically the um, cytoplasm of the cells. So we're gonna put some of the, we're gonna put 0.5 milliliters of the supernatant into tube five. And then we are going to resuspend the, uh, we're going to pour away the rest of the supernatant and resuspend the pellet in some isolation medium. So we've set up our five tubes, and in each tube we have a different uh, mixture of things to show the experiment. So in tube one, we have our chloroplasts and DC pip, and that one's going to go into the light. In tube two, we just have our DC pip and a little bit of isolation medium that will act as our um, negative control. So that should show with no color change what happens. Uh, tube three is the same as tube one, except this one's going to go into a cupboard to keep it dark. Tube four doesn't have any DC pip, has the chlorophyll extract um, in distilled water. And that one just shows that uh, what it should look like when it's decolorized and also it shows that there's no color change due just to the chloroplasts and tube 5 is our supernatant um, Which is just a cytoplasm of the cell uh, DC pip and that one will stay in the light and that one is to show that there are no electrons produced in the um, uh, Any reactions in the cytoplasm that they're only produced by light dependent reactions in the chloroplast so we're expecting that tube one will change to uh, colorless, will go the same color as tube four, and that tube three will stay blue the same as the uh, tube two. So we now place it into a strong light, 100 watt light bulb, and leave that for 10 minutes uh, with the third tube taken out and placed into a covered into a dark space or you can just wrap that into in silver foil instead. So after 10 minutes here are the results. Uh, tube 1 has gone from blue to mostly green. There's a little bit of blue left but mostly green showing that electrons are being produced by the chloroplasts when light uh, is shining on them and that's uh, reducing the DC pip. Tube 2, which just contained DC pip, shows that there's no color change with just DC pip. Uh, tube 3, which was our chloroplast preparation but kept in the dark, shows we're still mostly blue. So our electrons haven't been produced in great numbers there and haven't produced a DC pip. Tube 4 is our positive uh, control, which hasn't changed at all, showing that the, the uh, chloroplasts on their own won't change the color. And you can compare the colors of tube 1 and tube 4 and see they're quite similar. And tube 5, which is our supernatant. And the supernatant has stayed, again, yeah, mostly blue. There might be a little couple of chloroplasts that have got into the supernatant. Uh, but mostly blue there because there are no electrons produced in the, in the um, cytoplasm of the cell, so none in the supernatant, so the DC pip isn't reduced and remains blue. So overall, our experiment does show that for photosynthesis to occur, we need chloroplasts, which are present in tube one and three, and we uh, need light, which is present in tube, uh, which was present in tube one. 
and that shows that electrons are produced during the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis.